B9, Aston Martin. Well, the very best here. He's only got one hand on the steering wheel, John. Oh, Red Richard Westbrook nearly got a broken wrist. The kick back through the steering when that con when that contact took place. You the whiplash in the steering. That's very easy to damage your wrist. The Aston Martin trying to dive past Lucas Lure and he's managed to do it. Alex Muller regains the lead and look at that. Clavio Piccioni might just be able to take second place as well. There's contact made to the back end of that Nissan. Applause from the Aston Martin garage and Clavio Piccioni in trying to make a move up in a second as now lost a couple of places and he's stuck behind Enrico Minoldi. Well, that was a, I mean, a clever move by Piccioni in the one hand. Lucas Lura comes back, dives on the inside of Muller into Brooklyn, gets the job done and he's taken back the lead. So the lead changing hands twice in the space of three corners and now being shunted along Lucas Lura by Alex Muller who's struggling with a little bit of understand. Oh, look, Enrico Minoldi spun and there's still Clavio Piccioni as well. He's stuck it in there and the bonnet flies open on Michael Rossi's Corvette and three cars all getting caught up. There we see the Ford coming into the pits to the left front of the car on the damage to the bodywork under the front wing. Yep, can't get a close look up, but it seems fairly terminal because no one's in any great hurry other than our cameraman uh, to get down there and have a look. Let's hear Darren Turner's side of things now. He's with Haley. Darren, we just spoke to an extremely disappointed Richard Westbrook. What type of move was that from Stefan? Uh, well, I mean, obviously the move from uh, Richard wasn't great on the you know few corners before, and you know, we got uh, taken out by the uh, the Nissans yesterday, and then taken out again in the race uh, with the, with the Nissan then in that corner. But you know, as Stefan was coming past, and obviously massively frustrated, venting in a lot of anger, and uh, I certainly don't think it was intentional on, on Stefan the contact, but I think he wanted to make his point clear that you know it's uh, getting frustrating being taken out, um, and it's. Obviously, uh, a mistake by Stefan, and uh, you know I've, I've spoken briefly with him, and he's he's devastated. It wasn't wasn't his intention. Um, so now we got two two uh, wrecked cars again. So uh, a very frustrating weekend, not just for us, but you know for probably the Nissan guys as well. So uh, it's very unfortunate. So the gap that was six tenths of a second is now four tenths of a second between first and second. And actually Andy Zuber just lost a little bit towards the end of that lap. Now, much closer to the young driver Aston Martin going through Abbey. And now the little kink at Village. How do you... Has he got close enough to tie down the inside? No, but he's still going to keep gaining and gaining as through the loop they go. There might be a gap on the inside. No, a lock-up from Lucas Lure. Lure could be a sitting duck now coming out of the village. He might, uh, the loop I should say, he might just have lost a bit of traction there. Can the Aston Martin down the Wellington Strait force its way up into the lead? The momentum switched from the Lidisan to the Aston Martin, but now it's neutralised. A little lock-up put the Aston, another lock-up coming into Lofield. So maybe the cool, calm, collected loop. Lucas Lure, that I suspected would win this race, is now beginning to react. He's not only seeing the Aston Martin in his mirror, he realises that Andy Zuber in the Corvette is going to make this a three-way battle to victory. And we've got a spinner coming onto the pit street. Well, it's a blow-up. It's a blow-up from the all .com Lamborghini, and there's flames as well coming out of the back of that Lamborghini. And I think that was uh, uh, Dominic Schwager, was it? So flames from the back of that Lamborghini... That'll keep the crowd warm on this chilly Sunday afternoon. But, but Thomas Enger, how's he pacing around, wondering about his teammate? Let's hear Thomas, from him. four minutes to go. I can feel your heart from here pounding out of your chest. Well, it's, I, I feel I feel worse than uh, before the start of the race. Uh, it's really thrilling uh, end of the race. Uh, great battle. Uh, it is clean battle. Uh, I can see the Nissan is going a few times over the white line. So I think the, I hope the race director is taking uh, an eye on it, but uh, Alex is really close right now. So uh, I'm really wishing that he's going to have a try like now. Oh, he has had a go! Right down the inside into the first part of the loop. Now as they come to the left-hand hairpin, more locks up once again from Lucas Lure. Can that Aston Martin just nose itself alongside? Because that's all it's got to do. But by a matter of two or three metres, it's what it just can't quite do. Now, lifting off a little bit through Abbey. And that car, that young driver Aston, has spent no closer than this throughout the last five or six laps. He'll dive down the inside. He's got the inside line. They almost come to grief. Now the Nissan can try and dive down the inside line, but he's onto the grass. Anger is willing his 
teammate on get but look at the Corvette round the outside the Corvette wants to get on the action Lucas Lur lost the lead regained the lead kept the Corvette at bay and might just now be on his way to the checkered flag Lucas Lur had the room on the outside to give them both space and he was also able to use track position when it came to going through the loop so he had the advantage swing back to him and the man that might have been the biggest beneficiary Andy Zuber he was watching this thinking are these two cars going to take each other out am I going to be standing in the winner's podium the answer I think no for Andy Zuber but is there one more move maybe into Vale that Alex Muller has left of his sleeve well forget into Cop, not close enough next possibility will be done at the end of the straight into Stowe can't get it done there then your final chance will be close your eyes and just go past your normal braking zone and use the Nissan in fairness and within a racing context make that little bit of contact that's all I can see but the Nissan slow through the middle of Beckett it's got to be here that Müller picks up the slipstream from the Nissan it's a big car it draws you behind it but whether he's going to be in position it's easy to defend down the straight has to be said though John maybe the sister car drivers of JR Motorsports and young driver Aston Martin might like to look at this battle again and see how you can do it fairly and cleanly with just the odd bit of contact now going into Vell this has got to be the last chance for Alex Muller Lucas Lur has it covered nicely has it covered Muller late under braking but closes up to within a metre now might get some better traction out of the final corner but the start finish line comes up really fast on you and it's a win and the Torres trophy for Lucas Lure and Michael Crum, the German pairing of the Nissan take the checkered flag and take the honours here ahead of Alex Muller and Thomas Enger who started from pole and put up a cracking fight all the way to the line to come home second Andy Zuber and Mike Heseman once again having to settle for third place what a thrilling fantastic hours racing that was Another race victory for Lucas Lurt and for Michael Crum this season. They, of course, took the championship race at Portimao in the Algarve. And big hugs and uh, pats on the back all round down at JR Motorsports. Let's hear from the winners, though, with Hayley. Congratulations, Lucas. What a race that was for us to watch. How was it for you to take part in? Uh, I think I, I owed her five years. I don't know if you can okay. see the wrinkles already. Well, me too. <laughs> but the boys in the pits, they did just an amazing job. Thanks to JM, thanks for Nissan for providing us the GTI. It was so fantastic. We had two different concepts. You know, in the first couple of corners, he was quicker, I was quicker. The last uh, part of the circuit, I'm absolutely happy. And it's very good for JIM because we have so many friends, family, sponsors here. So to give them a victory here and to all our boys, uh, I'm really happy. Thanks to Michael. He did a fantastic job in the beginning. Just keeps there with the Aston. And now we're going to drink some champagne. Michael, you and Lucas continue to be a successful pairing for JRM. Yeah, it's a wonderful. I mean, I have to say, Lucas did an incredible job today. It's not only in the pit stop. I mean, the, the way he had to defend and he was battling and keeping the lead, give, getting back the lead. It was so exciting. I mean, it was horrible for me to watch from the pits. I don't want to watch again. I think the race was too long. They should have shortened it. It was really horrible for me I, um, to watch. But I think he did an amazing job. And really, thanks to Lucas, we won that today. Thank you. Well, that's the thing about this form of motorsport, the GT1 Championship, John. You're only as good as your teammate. You, you are the sum of all parts, aren't you, for a driver? Oh, very much so, and that's part of the skill in a team of putting together pairings that are complementary to each other. So let's hear from some complimentary runners-up with Haley. Congratulations, Alex. How frustrating. It looked like you could have taken the win, but at least you're finishing on the podium. Yeah, well, of course, first of all, thanks to the guys. They, they provide us with a good, good, good car after the... Yeah, the discussion we had yesterday after the qualifying race was the rear wing uh, pro drive uh, Aston Martin AMR was hanging in there and, and uh, get, out, get us out. So we were able to start from pole today. Thomas did a really good start, a good uh, first in. And uh, yeah, well, after the pit stop, we, we exit the pit second. And I tried, I tried everything you saw on the track to pass Lucas, but uh, I think we had a nice and fair fight. So uh, they won and we finished second. Uh, next race and Thomas congratulations it's great to see you back on the podium yeah I really enjoy the race first of all I was battling with uh, 
with Michael and he was pushing really hard and it was always within a one second uh, the gap between us and then after the pistol I really enjoyed the battle between Alex and, and Lucas so I think for the spectators it was great battle uh, we came out out of it a uh, little worse but uh, on the other hand second place is great result after the disappointment two races we had before thank you Thomas Thomas Sanger, who this time last year almost had the tourist trophy. He got excluded by the stewards. And now he has uh, almost had the tourist trophy as well, but a runner-up for him. And we mentioned the Corvette, Mike Hesemann and Andy Zuba coming home in third place for the second time this weekend. They're with Haley as well. Congratulations, guys. Andy, good to be back. Yes, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I was hoping that the uh, two guys in front of me, they maybe, you know, they crash a little bit or they try too much, but uh, I tried everything, but our top speed is, is not good enough. Uh, but uh, the car was good in the end, the team did a great job, Mike did a great start, so I'm happy. Thank you, guys. And off to the podium they go, they know their way up there, as do uh, Enger and Muller, of course. And Krum and Lure, the uh, top three from yesterday. Are oh, the top three again, but in different order this time around. Nissan winning from Aston Martin and Corvette. The gap only two tenths of a second as the first two cross the line. Really, really close racing here at Silverstone. Uh, Step Dusseldorf and Livio Piccioni, as I mentioned, coming home fourth. Bass Engine Minkelock taking some points that Lamborghini might not have thought was there at the start of the weekend. Well done to Warren Hughes and Enrique Bernoldi after a bad start from Hughes. Bernoldi uh, got them up to seventh place once again. And points as well for the Belgian racing team uh, with Iggs and Nygaard and Pastorelli and Schwager in the other Lamborghini. Three laps down, but finishing in the points. And our winners to come forth now and receive a trophy that uh, we picked up from the Pall Mall RAC Club on uh, Friday. Delivered to Silverstone, awaiting for a further winner. Yeah, and I think a very worthy driving partnership taking up the Tourist Trophy. Lucas Lohr, who had to defend throughout his stint and a great opening stint by Michael Krum. He's a strong man, is Ben Cousins, lifting up that trophy. Look, it takes two of them there to take it off his hands. No, it is a heavy, it's a very, very solid trophy. It's, it's I mean, literally, it's the best part of 100 years old. Well, you think the girls would wear trainers so they can get off the podium a bit faster? Oh, they love it, really. It's all part of it. They, <laughs> James Rumsey's drunk too much, but there's none left in the bottle to spray, but he gets a bottle stuffed down his neck. Thomas Inger decides that's... Uh, our way of saying congratulations, James, on a great victory after a great battle between two outstanding drivers and very differing teams. It's been a great day for Nissan and Crum and Lure. Goodbye. <laughs>